Hello everyone and welcome back to the topic of assessment. Today we're going to talk about qualitative and quantitative data. Now, if you'll think back to some previous classes, we first talked about screenings and then we led into some of the diagnostic assessments. These assessments will help us to determine child eligibility for special education services. But today, I want to talk about program planning and progress monitoring. Specifically, our recommended practices indicate that a child's performance should be monitored holistically. This means that the teacher should understand the importance of viewing the whole child and the interdependence of the many factors that affect performance. We know this to be true for all children, but especially for those with disabilities and developmental delays. Both NAEYC, which is the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and the Council for Exceptional Children Division of Early Childhood, recommend that collecting data in a natural environment and within typical daily routines is best. In other words, observe them participating and engaging in activities throughout the day. So this might be in the classroom or at home, uh, participating with family, friends, extended family, etc. So one of the first ways to do this is to measure both qualitatively and quantitatively, not using just one method. The use of both provides a more complete picture of the child's abilities. So we discussed specific measures in a previous lecture. I want you to think back to those. So remember these that you're taking a look at now. But what we know is that teachers and interventionists should measure more than the frequency, accuracy, latency, and so on all of which are very important. And they're usually measured quantitatively, but we can also use qualitative measures to develop a deeper understanding of the child's development. So I'd like for you just to take a second and look at this picture. Take a look. There's a lot to look at, and in the spirit of early childhood special education today, I thought we'd use this barnyard scene. So I'd like for you to look at the scene and think of how you might describe what you're seeing. So if you are observing this scene, if you're there physically on this premises, what might you be observing? So think about that for a few minutes. All right, so what did you find? Did you see a red barn? How about a gray silo? Some yellow ducks? A green tractor? And a whole lot of other things, right? There was a dog. There were pigs, cows, sheep, horses. Did anyone see the kitties? Lots to look at, right? So now I'd like you to think about all of these observations that you made. Think about which ones might be qualitative and which ones might be quantitative. You had a few minutes to think that through? All right, did you place them in the right column? So some qualitative observations might have been that the barn is red, and there are yellow ducks, and smells of, I don't know, I'll leave that to you. And a collie, right? There was a dog there, it was a collie. And that gives us a lot more detailed information than what we see over here in the right-hand column that is one dog. So you can see that some things can be measured both qualitatively and quantitatively. But when combined, we get a deeper, richer understanding of what we're observing. And this really helps to support how we plan for children. If you remember in that earlier slide, we were look at talking about program planning and progress monitoring. Well, these are the pieces of information that directly support the decisions that we make about how we plan for children and how we know that children are progressing or not progressing. All right, for next class, I want you to complete your readings. 
on qualitative and quantitative data. Come to class prepared to demonstrate your knowledge by collecting both types of data from a video of several children with and without disabilities in the kindergarten classroom. So I'll see you next time.